Just, here we go. Just to make sure it's a it's on. Okay. Is that Patricia? Ah, sorry. <laughs> I see Patricia. I do see Patricia. Hey. She's not, she's not recognizing that name. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Uh, I just feel like... Oh, she probably can't talk right. She's yeah, yeah. We got to. Um, the AI. She hasn't sent the. Uh... All right, let me see if she sends for the summary. Well, at least it's recording. Yes. So that we have. Can't hear anything. I wonder if that's on her end. Let me tell her. She might have to sign off and come back on. Yeah. I said I'm going to enable request. Yeah, because it's not showing her audio is connected. Oh, okay. Okay, she's coming back on. Okay. Okay, it says it's been recorded. Did you start recording me? Yeah, yes. It is. You want me to hold it for a while? I could pause. This was it. testing. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, what man. I did. What I did. How do you connect? Sorry, how are you? you oh, okay. <laughs> we can hear you well and we see you. I hit the wrong button. Okay. No, you hit the correct one. You're good. <laughs> okay. Patty, can you hear now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Good afternoon. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Hi, Eva. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. We say yeah. you. <laughs> Unleash, Harry, when you want to start the introduction. Um, I'm say. Give it like two more minutes. It's only 428. Okay. Emmeline. Emmeline is going to say when to start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have two more minutes. Uh, um, Patty, it looks like you're frozen. Uh oh. Mm. Right back. She, she is in Michigan. <laughs> maybe she's frozen. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> she's in Michigan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wish you guys all the luck or whatever. So again, this is for educational purposes only, and I'm gonna turn the time over to Michelle so she can introduce her aunt. And thanks again for coming. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Miss Leona Turnbull is a retired nurse after 40 years of service. She served our country 14 and a half years as a nurse in the United States Army Reserve. She now serves as a board member in the Central Florida Black Nurses Association. She is a member of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, where Charles joined, where Charles Jones is the pastor. Please welcome Ms. Leona Turnbull for our conversation in women's health, women, sorry, disease, heart disease in women's health. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Evelyn. I'm so happy to be here, and I thank the audience for being here as well. Very happy that you joined us today. So Dr. Sankey and Emlyn are, are the hosts for this program. And this program is available every Saturday at 4.30. And if you miss the program, you can see it in about two or three weeks later on YouTube. You just Google Dr. Sankey living well. So one second, let me start my slides. Okay. 
Já disse aí mais. Yes. Leah, you just muted, but we can see your slides. Yeah, Lee, if you're talking, we're not hearing. Uh, did you mute just mute yourself? Hello. I think she muted herself. Let yeah, me see she if I can. Let me see if I can unmute her. I don't think I'm co-host. Well, she just logged off. She's gonna log back in. I think she she just logged off. So okay, I'm back in. Okay, so. So audience, just hold tight. I guess um, Lee's just having some technical difficulties. She'll be, at, she'll be right back. Oh, OK, we got it. Yeah. OK. okay. All right. So okay. wait. Can we start now? Okay, yes. great. Yes. Okay. So I apologize. Um, but we'll start now. So is recorded on? And Michelle, you show on the screen or is this my yes, screen? Yes, the recording is on. It is recording. Okay. This yeah, we send your screen now. Oh Michelle, that's the screen. Okay. <laughs> so um, so I'm Lee Turnbull. I'm going to be presenting heart disease in women. Um, Michelle, somehow I can't see. Okay. I can't see the full slide. Mish, could you go into um to slideshow and start from the beginning? Yes, yeah, slideshow is where that up. Uh... Right. And start from the beginning. To the left. Oh, there you go. Oh, so okay. So I'm still gonna be handicapped because um, I can. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm so sorry. So good. Okay, we start. So I told you that it's um posted on YouTube. So heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. And for African American, the statistics are even worse. Okay. So heart disease is the number one cause of death and disability in women in the US. And as an African American woman, you have an even, even higher chance of dying from heart disease and at a younger age compared to white women. Next slide, please. So atherosclerosis is a chronic disease process that starts very early in age, and it happens over time. It's the leading cause of death in male as well as female. So African-Americans are prone to heart disease. And research has suggested that there is a gene that African American has that make them more sensitive to salt. And in that, that increases the blood pressure and heart disease. Next slide. Just as Native Americans are also have a higher incident of Um, having coronary artery disease 
compared to their white counterpart. Next slide. So African American adults experience high burden of cardiovascular risk factors such as hypertension, obesity, and they're twice as likely to die in relationship to their white counterpart. Coronary artery disease kill almost kill three hundred more than three hundred thousand in twenty twenty one, and about one in ten adults <clears throat> at the age of twenty have um, cardiac or coronary artery disease. So about two in ten people. Um, happen two in 10 have um, cardiac coronary artery disease and it happens in adults less than 65 years of age. And again, just forgive me because I can't see the full slides because the pictures are there, but I'll do my best. So nothing else could go wrong, trust me. <laughs> it all happened already. <laughs> so African-American disproportionately are affected by obesity. Among non-Latino Blacks, um, they are also have the same issue. So we have 63% of men and 77% of women are either obese or overweight. So here we have the body mass index or the BMI chart. And I apologize that it's fuzzy, but if you would Google BMI, you would get a very beautiful, a very beautiful chart, and you could see where you are um, in this on the chart. The weight is at the top, and the height is at the bottom, and it's just like the 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 babies when we took them to the clinic and we charted their growth. Just you do the same thing with the weight and height, so you can see what what category you fall into. Next shot. Next slide, thank you. So in some women, the first sign and symptom of heart disease can be, next slide, voila, a full heart attack. Men, they have their heart attack and they crunch their chest and you know what's happening. But women, we have all kinds of vague symptoms. And I tell you my story, how I found out I had heart disease. I was going on a cruise and I wanted to get <clears throat> the motion patches for my ear. And the doctor said, well, you need, um, you need a uh, EKG. So we did the EKG, she did the EKG. And she read, after she read it, she said, go immediately to the hospital. And full as I was, I jumped in the car and went to the hospital. That is not, you should not do that because anything could happen to you in the car. I should have told the doctor I was by myself and then she could have called EMS. So when I got to the hospital, I got this pain. I, I always had this pain when I had to run for the jitney because I worked at two different hospitals. And every time I would hit the jitney and sit down, I can't hardly breathe for like oh, about four or five seconds. And it would happen all the time. And one time I went to a doctor and the doctor said, well, stop running for the bus. <laughs> so anyhow, I continued. But lucky that I did go to get those patches for my ear so that the doctor would take the EKG and find out that I need to um to have um stents put in because that's what happened once I got there the the they the cath lab was waiting for me and they took me directly into the cath lab and they um they did a um put a catheter from my groin up to my heart and it's a guided camera at the end so you can see what 
that you what you are seeing. So they would go in and grab the clot and like a rotor rooter, and then they will pull it out, and then they would um leave a stent in place. So the stent is like the size of a like um a spring in the ballpoint pen. Um, and they would leave that in place so that you could continue to get blood flowing through the arteries. All right, next slide. Thank you. So if a plaque ruptures, and I'll show you a diagram of this later, if it ruptures, it forms a blood clot, and then it goes into the artery, which could cause the heart attack. During the heart attack, and I have a slide for that as well, you'll see where the muscle dies because lack of blood, the blood carries oxygen to, to the site. So if you are not getting the oxygen, it's going to die and it's blocked off. So um, you need to have intervention as I had. So here we see, um, you have on the left side, you have the normal artery wall and you see it's nice and clear so that the blood could flow through it. But, um, and then on the other side, you have the unhealthy one. So you see where you have the plaque formation, that yellow part, that's the plaque. And that's what breaks off and go into the artery and cause um, your heart attack. If it goes to your brain, you're gonna have a stroke. If it goes to your pulmonary, if it goes to your lung, then you, you're really in trouble, then you really need to be in the hospital because major intervention needs to be done. Sometimes immediate surgery um, needs to be done. So you definitely need to be in the hospital. So any of the clots are bad. Um, so back to, okay. So yes, thank you. So back to what I was telling you earlier, where the groin, where the catheter is placed in the groin, and follow up to your heart, and there uh, they they put the catheter so that you can see. Thank you, Mesh. I appreciate. It. No, that's okay. Um, that's all for that slide. Thank you. I have another one that I'll show you. So the heart attack occurs, like I said, when the plaque breaks off and go into the artery and and blocks the artery, and then. You cannot get blood or oxygen to the site. Next slide. Uh, so um, we can't see the slide as well because the um, pictures are there, but it's okay. We, you see where that circle is um, in the heart right there? So there's a clot there because the if, if the plaque broke off, formed a blood clot, and it lodged into that area right there. So you could see, uh, maybe you are seeing the whole thing, hopefully, but you can see where after the clot, it is dark because the muscle died because you were not able to get blood and oxygen to the area. But the body is phenomenal. You have these other arteries that would form like collateral circulation. So it's similar to if you're on a highway and there's an accident, then you go off to the side road so you can get where you're going. So that's what happened. New um, pathway of form so that the blood could get to the heart. Next slide. Um, oh boy, we're gonna have to go faster. Uh, so hypertension and blood pressure is one and the same, and it's the highest um, um, highest heart disease among African American. Next slide. So your blood pressure, the normal blood pressure is 120, less than 120 millimeter of mercury and less than 80 millimeter of mercury. So next slide. So here's a chart of the blood pressure. So it's normal, as I just said, if it's 120 over 
80. But um, then it's, it goes higher, as you see where it's elevated. And then you're diagnosed with hypertension in stage one, um, if it's that uh, reading, and stage two, if it's over 140, over 90. So, and this is not just one time. This is a series of um, tests that the doctor would do so that um, you know whether or not uh, you, you've you been diagnosed with um, hypertension. Next slide. So some people wonder what is the most important, um, whether the systolic or the diastolic is more important. Well, I say equally uh, important because over 50, you know, we would say the diastolic because that's when the heart is at rest. But actually, um, at age 50, you could be diagnosed with a stroke if you um, if your blood if your systolic is high. As you see here, if your blood pressure is 180 over 110, head to the emergency room right away because you know a stroke could be on the way. Okay, next next slide. Thank you. Okay, I want you to break down the numbers again. Um, we have men that, that are a little more than us, than females. Um, when we are in, before menopause, we are better. We have lower numbers because of the, the, the hormones. But after that, then we get, um, develop higher numbers um, of blood pressure. Next slide. Uh, uh, when it comes to blood pressure, uh, we are often more diagnosed than anyone else in the world. African-Americans, that is. Next slide. I'm looking at the time and I see that um, I have a lot of slides so the time that I have, so I need to go through quickly. So that we die of heart disease higher than uh, non-Latino whites as well. Next slide. So... So heart disease, again, is the leading cause of women in the United States that it can affect women at any age. Next slide. So it is the, it is the responsible, it is responsible for over 300 deaths in women. About um, every five female deaths, or about a five female death. So research has shown that about half of the women does not recognize that heart disease is the number one killer of African Americans. Next slide. And we we you know we we talk about cancer. That cancer is very important, but um, cancer is not the the number one. I mean, this is how important it is that that heart disease is the number one. So we really have to pay attention to it. We have to know the signs so that we can take steps to prevent or to get treatment from it. Next slide. So other common types of heart disease in women are atrial fibrillation, which is called AFib, and that's when the heart either be too fast or too slow, or it beats in an irregular way. Next slide. So when a person has AFib, like I said, the upper chamber of the heart is not beating normally, so therefore the lower chamber is not getting the blood supply as it should. Next slide. So atrial fibrillation could be brief episodes or it could be a permanent condition where you'll be taking medication to treat it. So ring the alarm, black women. Heart disease is very, very important. This is a big problem. Only about half of the women know that they that heart disease um, kills so so um, has such a high number of people that die. We have clogged arteries, we have stroke, we have hypertension, and we have um, chest pain. Next slide. That means that every nearly one in every two women have have heart disease. So that if you're sitting in a room with another black woman, it's very likely one of you have hypertension, have heart disease, and don't even know it. Next slide. 
Okay, so because you get um heart disease from your genes, sometimes you can also get it from picking up unhealthy habits from your parents. So there's some things that we can do about it, and there's there's some risk factors that we cannot do anything about, like our genes and our sex, but there are some things that we can do about, about preventing heart disease or taking very good care of it. So next slide. The biggest risk factors for heart disease tend to be more common in African American than any other race. And to make it more complicated, it has a lot have to do, other than the risk factors that you can't change, have to do with things that we do. Next slide. So if you're frying your vegetables in grease and snacking on deep fried french fries every a couple of times a week, you want to replace that with healthy, healthier um, foods. So you want to try raw vegetables or baked potatoes. Your arteries will breathe a sigh of relief. So I, I always say we have the... We have the five whites that you want to stay away from the white bread, the white wheat, the white um, potatoes, white pasta. Um, you can eat wheat pasta. You can have um, sweet potatoes or yams. You can have, um, um, well, the sugar you, you don't want to have, and you could, um, and the substitute is not much better unless you're using stevia because it's plant-based. And the salt already comes in your meal, so you should never add salt to your food. Next slide. So limiting the amount of alcohol you drink and finding out if, it, if the heart disease runs in your family so you could, be, um, you could move towards uh, getting heart healthy. So... Heart, um, go red for women, which was yesterday, um, February 2nd was the uh, go for red for women day. So you should wear a red dress for for that occasion. And there's many um, uh, organizations that have programs, a uh, luncheon that you go to, to um, to be involved with go red for um, women. So it's, a, um, it's an initiative by the American Heart Association to um, keep Blood to keep women healthy from heart disease and also from strokes. Okay, next slide. Of course, uh, go back. Of course, you want to speak with your doctor uh, to get a plan for what you need to do, how you can stop the disease, um, and make sure that you know you're doing all the things that you need to be doing to stay healthy. Okay. So diabetes, high cholesterol, obesity, um, increases the person's risk for developing heart disease. And these are all issues that African-Americans have. That's very common in our community. Okay. So next slide. So spread the word. Next slide. So what you can do to lower your risk of heart disease. Next slide. In summary, a good place to start is in the mirror and your everyday habits are the key to preventing heart disease. A CDC recommends adapting, adapting health, heart, health, heart healthy habits, such as, well, the CDC didn't say this, but God gave us victory over our bodies. He gave us this temple and we need to keep it healthy, to keep it well because it came from God and we want to do the things that God wants us to do. So a few lifestyle changes should be, as we said, know your family history, make sure your diet is rich in fruits and vegetables and fiber and that you... Um, that you have good fats, um, not the trans fat, not the um, fat that um, that um, that's not good. So you want to have good fat, which includes omega three, extra virgin oil, 
people in olive oil, um, fatty fish such as salmon and sardine if you um, if you eat um, meat, uh, and plant-based chai seeds, which is um, walnuts, uh, almond. So that's not the full list. That's just some things that I thought of and I thought I'd share with you. So staying active with 150 minutes every week, like uh, I I go to the aerobics the, for swimming aerobics, but it's been very cold, so I can't go. So I walk in the house. I walk with um Miss Moore, um Tiffany Moore. She's on YouTube, and you just turn it on. It's for thirty minutes. You um you could you could exercise the Motown, but she also has the gospel channel as well. Next slide. So you manage your ABCs. We said that the um, the ABC that we have in CPR, and now uh, we have ABC. So we have ABCs for heart for heart disease as well. So you're gonna manage your blood sugar, which is the A, the hemoglobin A1C. You're going to the B for blood pressure. You keep your blood pressure under control. The C to lower your cholesterol, and the the S is do not smoke. Or use tobacco products that they can see and get into your arteries and it um, blocks your arteries. So drink at least one liter of water a day. Um, the there's a um, there's a formula where you drink a half to an ounce of um, water per every pound that you have, um, or and because of person, size, their weight, and activity, and area of living can influence their water requirement. So example, if you're 150 pounds, you should drink 75 to 150 ounces of water a day. So give or take. If you're a bigger person, you drink more water. If you're more active, or you could drink less. But you need to be drinking water because your kidneys need um need to be flush. You see in our communities too, we have a lot of people on dialysis. You see how many dialysis centers are in our community because, you know, we have um, issues with our kidneys. So, um, and diabetes also is a, a big one for causing our kidney disease as well. So you want to drink your water. You want to get your rest because um, your body's been working all day long and now you um you when you go to sleep that's when your body re um juvenate you know and um so make sure you get your eight hours of rest every day and having a closer relationship with God would also be very good. I thank you for listening and um if you have any questions, then you wrote them in the chat. I meant to tell you earlier. We could, um, okay, uh, you can stop showing. Thank you. We um very happy that you came again. But if you have any questions, I'll try to answer your questions so we can just have a discussion about heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, well, one, the, the numbers, the statistics are just like, wow. Um. But when you said the blood pressure, when you said 180 over 110, is it both in combination you should go to the doctor, to emergency, or is it, let's say you have like... Huh. You should go to the doctor with that blood pressure. Because when your blood pressure is high like that, there's a very good chance that you could be having, that you will have a stroke. But what I was saying, so, both numbers are that high. So let's say you have 130 over 110. Is that a concern? Or... Well, again, we talk about the diastolic being a very important issue because that's when your heart is at rest. So why is it so high? So it should be at 80. It's still high. But I wouldn't necessarily say that um that you have to um you have to go to the doctor. I mean you have to go to the emergency department, but certainly you should be letting your doctor know that you have that um Agreed. those numbers. Okay. Yes. Hortensia said there's an exercise program that comes on daily from 10 to 11 on channel 15 called oh. Sit, Sit, Tobe, Sit Tube. Fit, sorry. Oh. 
fit to. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Atos, for that. Appreciate that. Yes, that's an alternative to more. So we saw that um that um I, I wanted to mention before, but I, I went a little fast. I wanted to just make sure that I got everything in. But since I had the five minutes, I wanted to say that um that um Dexter King, uh, Martin Luther King has um son, youngest son, that he passed away and he was a vegetarian. So uh, I, he passed from uh, prostate cancer. So I don't know really what happened otherwise, but that we have to be concerned of, we have to be concerned, thank you, Aura. We have to be concerned, not only with the diet, but so many other aspects of our health, right? So just being a vegetarian is, is, is not enough. You know, I, I think that's a very good thing to do because the meats are not the best. However, you could have meat every once in a while, but we know that red meat is, is not good for your heart. So um, mm -hmm. so just wanted to mention that. Correct name of that program was Sit to be Fit. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Lee, for such pertinent information because I have learned from this, you know, your yeah. presentation today. You know, I Thank know, you. I know um, the heart disease, the um, symptoms for heart disease um, is so different in women compared to men. Yes. And that's why women have to be so very careful in recognizing symptoms. So shortness of breath is a big thing. You should not be short of breath. Just walking up a few steps, you know, you should not be short of breath. And it's, you know, and we have to know about it because look at what that doctor told you, Lee. Stop <laughs> yeah. Instead of telling you to go, let's go check this out. Because yes. short of breath, just that few steps should not cause you to be short of breath. And thank God you were able to get, you know, you went and get, um, you were going for something else, but you ended up with the doctor saw you, I guess your EKG and maybe some elevation STs or something they saw. And Absolutely. that this need to be checked into. So you have to be yes. so very careful. I advise everyone, if you if you have a relative who is in the medical field, you need to cons I should say cons you need to talk to them about, you know, you know, things that are happening to you because they maybe know you better and I don't know, they might just be able to point you in the right direction. But sometimes That's you right. go to the doctor and they're so busy trying to see all these patients in one day that they miss things. But you know, know your body. Nausea, vomiting, um, indigestion. That's yes. a common thing. Yes. Women have these symptoms and the doctor just put it aside. Tell your doctor, I want this to be checked out. So they can start ordering lab work. They can do EKGs. They can tell a lot just from that instead of being, you don't have to do anything invasive. But let the doctor tell the doctor, I want, because you have a right. You can tell your doctor, they are working for you. So you tell your doctor, this is what I want. That's why I said, talk to a med if you have someone in your family in the medical field, they can maybe tell you, when you go to the doctor, tell the doctor, this is what you're having these symptoms and this is what you want. Seriously, mm -hmm. we need to be proactive. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you were saying that Blacks, African-Americans, we have a genetic um, tendency disposition, yeah. For salt, I didn't realize that. Yeah. For sodium, so that's why we have to be very careful in cons, you know, consumption of sodium, especially the refined salt. Yes. Yeah. That refined salt it has all these different phosphate and all these things added to it. You know, use healthier salt like Celtic and Himalaya salt. You know, that has more minerals, and those minerals are good for our body. So, you know, we all have to do everything in moderation, but yes. um, if we can use those high, you know, healthier salt and stay away from refined foods because they are packed with sodium. We have, all, yeah. Yeah. Should, yeah. No, we, we have a question and uh, someone has Lenore. You uh, have a question? Uh, there was one in the chat before her. Sorry about that, Lenore. Um, one says, um, listen to your bodies and act when you see the, um, you know, you see the changes and don't ignore them. Uh, we must be our own advocates. You can tell your doctor not to rush. Just say stop and listen to me. And there's a question from Lisa. 
Um, how early should one check your heart disease and what age if it is hereditary? Well, it's from age 20. You see, they're um, age 18. I, I think as long as uh, you know you have it in your family, you need to be checking it because these things start very early, like in our 20s when we eat all kinds of stuff because we think we can do it. But when you're 50, then, you know, you see what happens. So, yes, you should you should go as early as possible. Lenore, go um, ahead. Can I say something? Yes. Emmeline. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, Josephine. Two things. about One is about blood, high blood pressure. As individuals, we may function at different blood pressure levels. So if I can, I may function at 180 over 90. Some persons may do 120 over 70 or 90 over 70. All the people nowadays tend to function at higher because as we get older, our arteries may get stiffer so they have a new normal for the older folks, probably from 60 up, raise the they would accept 150 over 90 without any other indications of high blood pressure. So individually, we may function at different levels of high blood pressure. Well, I, I I agree with some of the things you said. Um, certainly, um, individuals who are older might have a blood pressure of 90 over 60 and have no problem. So mm -hmm. a blood pressure like that, as long as they, you have no symptoms, it's not a problem. You know, as long as you don't have symptoms, because if it's symptomatic, then you need to take care of it. I don't know if you meant to say you could function with 180 over 90. Did you mean to say that? Because did you? So I yes, said, you could have. 150 over 90. Okay. Well, 150 over 90, you see, is still, you have been diagnosed with type 2 di um, hypertension. So without, that means that you require treatment. No, I said without any other complaints. I That's like true. You mm -hmm. know, it's the. Is the hypertension is the silent killer. So if you continue to have a blood pressure of 150 over 90 indefinitely, eventually it's going to manifest in mm -hmm. in some way or the other. It needs your blood pressure needs to be controlled. And controlled blood pressure is 120 over 80. Mm -hmm. That's control. Now yes. you could you could have your one whatever blood pressure you're saying. But it, it needs to be controlled. Yeah. And also blood can pressure. I, oh, sorry. But Lenore oh, sorry. had her hand up for a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I hi. It was a very interesting presentation. And I have a question because you may have stated this before, but I wasn't on. I've had people I supervise who had heart attacks and the symptoms were not the traditional symptoms. So for women, when you go to the emergency room and you're having certain symptoms, they ignore you. They dismiss you because they don't think you're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. One of the people I, people I supervised was having a heart attack and she had pain just in her upper back. Mm -hmm. She had to go back mul multiple times before they diagnosed her with having a heart attack. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things you may have mentioned, but like I said, I missed that portion of it. Yes. So I'm not sure if you mentioned that the symptoms are so different for women oh, absolutely. and what some of them were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lenore. Yes, we did mention that. Um, I I myself had the same situation. I mm -hmm. I was just having a little shortness of breath when I would run for the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can have um the back pain. Some people have back pains. You know, the women have different pains. The men, it's usually obvious with them. They have that crush and chest pain. You know what's mm -hmm. happening with them. But we have different symptoms. Yeah. And also. Um, blood pressures fluctuate That's depending true. on what you're eating, what you're doing. So yes. I used to tell my patients, keep a record of your blood pressures. So when you go in to see the doctor, you can tell him this is what it's been reading this week. He can then make a better diagnosis because you're not just giving him yesterday's number. 
you're giving him a week supply. So you need to keep a record of your blood pressure. Again, it fluctuates. Today it may be 120, tomorrow it may, may be 150 over 90. So it's important to record it and bring it into your appointment. Lisa asks in the chat, if you're taking medication to lower your pressure, what pressure is too low? If, if it's symptomatic, if it, um, you yeah, okay, consider that your normal is one, 120 over 80. So yeah. if it's 90 over 50 and you don't have a problem, the doctor, you've been to the doctor and, and, and you don't have any symptoms, it probably would be okay. But it's not usual for a certain age to have a certain um blood pressure. Like usually that 90 over 50 are usually little old ladies. So then we evaluate whether they're symptomatic or they're non-symptomatic. If they have any symptoms, it has to be treated. If they're not having any symptoms, you just leave them alone. Yeah. And I and when you say symptomatic, you're talking about like dizziness, yes. light headedness. Yeah. Thank you. So yes. those are the symptoms you need to look out for if you have a too low for blood pressure. You know, you when you when you stand up, you find that you're dizzy or yes. you People are sitting down the room yeah. spinning. So you have to um be careful because you can fall. So those are the symptoms mostly that uh, low blood pressure causes. I think Carly says something very important that no symptoms doesn't mean that you're okay. So even if those numbers are high and you've been operating, you know, regularly mm -hmm. with 150 over 90. Just because you don't have any symptoms doesn't mean that it's okay. If that's high, then it's high. Go and see your doctor and let them diagnose whether or not it's an issue or not. Right. Because yeah. um, you, you are hurting your body too. Your kidneys are being damaged. If your blood pressure is high, you're not having any symptoms. They call it the silent killer. Your kidneys are being affected. And so maybe soon you'll need dialysis because you had this blood pressure all the time had no symptoms but now your your kidneys are not working so you need to see the doctor and then make sure that um everything is okay two hands up marcia has a hand up um the, the key thing is you know everyone runs away from going to the doctor we want to say i'm fine and somebody else Somebody else had it higher than I did, et cetera. The important thing is to have it evaluated so that you can know what's normal for you. You don't want to have your eyes open with high blood pressure. Your kidneys will be in Your veins will be in bad shape with high blood pressure, and you're at real risk for stroke, which yeah. is important. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of um, Miss Lisa's question, if the doctor prescribes a medication, metoprolol is one of the main ones. Keep an eye on that because that may drop your pressure too low. Mm -hmm. So he give it to you because your pressure was high, but then it may drop your pressure too low. And so you're back to square one. So it's in important to keep up with your medications and again keep a record of your blood pressure because that medication may need to be adjusted you got to keep that in mind as well um and she did say that her lowest pressure was 105 over 56 i'm assuming lisa that was with the medication yes that's with the medication Okay. And the metoprolol that I do take is 25 milligrams, which they gave to me after surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So monitor that blood pressure. Um, when you go to your doctor visit, take all your medications that you are taking so that they can see what you're taking. I know <clears throat> I've had patients that, you know, after surgery, maybe the blood pressure will be high before leaving the hospital, the doctor put them in a it's a lopressor, and um, the next thing you know, a patient they go home and they keep on taking it. A primary care physician does not know that they are now on metoprolol. They didn't they, because they never put them on it, but they got that in the hospital. 
So especially after a hospital visit, make sure you take all your medications to your primary care doctor so that they can know what you're taking so they can keep an eye on it. Because if your blood pressure drops too low, too suddenly, you can pass out. You know, metoprolol is one of those medications, yes, that can cause blood pressure to drop suddenly. And I know for blacks, you know, ACE inhibitor, well, the sinopril mm -hmm. and those prills, we have to be careful taking them because those medications can affect black people. They can cause kidney problems. Mm -hmm. So right. just be careful. So if you have these medications, make sure your doctor is monitoring your kidney levels very closely. I have a question. Can right. I comment? Okay. Lenore? Um, the question was, I forget the question. But, oh, the question was this. Are you going to make this available to us? Because I'd like to have a copy so I can see it in its entirety. Yes, we said, um, oh, Emily. <laughs> yes, so Dr. Sanke, yeah. So we recorded, and once we recorded, it's going to, you know, she can put it on the website. YouTube, um, yeah. The YouTube that she, yeah. So we have all these presentations yeah. that, that we do. We do put them on YouTube, and you can go back and look at them. Yes. And the other thing was a comment. I don't know if you, this was a medical pres presentation with allopathic medicine. Did you address any natural means of blood pressure control? Just question. How so? Um, well, we have other um, presenters that do a very good job at that. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, invite you to look for those YouTube um, uh, past presentation and the ones to come because they do. I, I didn't do any because we have um, other, um, I say, excellent people. Um, they do yeah. a better job than I do. So yeah. I, I, I left it curious. for them. When yeah. you talk about lifestyle, which is very important, lifestyle is important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you mentioned something about um, Dr. Martin Luther King's son passed away when he was a vegetarian. Yes. Um, what people people don't understand, they, um, they said, oh, they're vegetarians. And what they do, they will eat a lot of um, those um, artificial meats and artificial, you know, stuff that is worse to me than eating meat. So mm -hmm. those things full of sodium and mm -hmm. sodium is deadly for, especially yes. in, for black, yeah. um, they are refined. They, they damage the body just as, you know, meat will do, you know, if you eat the wrong type of meat. So we have to be careful. So uh, not because someone is a vegetarian, they will live in a healthy vegetarian uh, or, or eating a healthy different vegetarian diet. Because a vegetarian, they should be eating more nuts, grains, um, beans, and that kind of stuff. And stay away from those processed alter, al, um, alternative foods. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. This was, oh, you know, honey, still up. Okay. Is it from before? Yeah, I Lenore? think Lenore, you have your hand up still or you just didn't put it down? I think she just didn't put it down. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Analogs. Yes. Those analogs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Lee, for such an excellent presentation. It was something that we really need to hear because women suffer from heart disease and, um, die from heart disease you said one in two women have heart disease so we have to be very careful so with this message that you just presented it's we need to be encouraged now to go to our doctors and have them if you did not have an ekg just get a baseline um ekg do some um some lab works you know your cholesterol look at those levels because they are so very crucial um, in the causing of heart disease and high blood pressure, which is a leading cause for heart disease. So if we can keep those numbers down, exercise is very good. When you exercise, you produce nitric oxide. What is nitric oxide? It dilates. What does nitric oxide do? It dilates arteries. You know, arteries are dilated. Blood can flow easily without causing that pressure that force that it has to go through those arteries. When we, you come to the hospital and you're having chest pain, we give you nitroglycerin, which is nitric oxide. So here we have nitric oxide before we exercise. 
something that simple. Drinking more water is so important. It keeps the blood thin, it's not viscous, um, not thick, and therefore blood flows smoothly. So, so many things that we can do, as you said, um, Lee, lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. Very important. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. having me. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Yes. And I, I apologize again for the beginning. I, I don't know what happened, but um, Michelle was able to save me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. It Thank was you, worth the wait. It was worth the wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let yeah. me know by. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, for well, your time. Mm -hmm. Great information. Yes, Bye, yes. everybody. Have so a good come time. back next no. week. Come back next week. We have more in, in Princeton informative information to give you guys. So we do this every Saturday at four thirty. Um, the same link. Come back and yes. join us. Yeah. So we're gonna stop recording before we we go. We always pray and ask.